Hello and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Here we go again, after a great seven days of rest and relaxation. My family and I went up to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and spent those seven days camping on the shores of Lake Superior. While there, in the bathhouse of the campground, there was a flyer stating that Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote his poem, The Song of Hiawatha, there. I wasn't too sure if it was in the exact spot the campground was on, but it sounds like it for sure took place on the shores of Lake Superior. So today, we will read one of the 22 poems that make up the Song of Hiawatha with the poem Hiawatha's Fishing from the book The Complete Poetical Works of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. In retrospect, as I was working on today's episode, I should have pulled out my phone, sat on the beach, and read some Longfellow. However, I did get some good reading in as I woke up earlier than everybody else and sat and basked in the sun with the dog waiting for everybody. What a great trip, and I can't wait to go back for another trip. Now, let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Hiawatha's Fishing Forth upon the Gitchagumi, on the shining big sea water, with his fishing line of cedar, of the twisted bark of cedar, forth to catch the sturgeon Nama, Mishinama, king of fishes, in his birch canoe exulting, all alone went Hiawatha. Through the clear transparent water, he could see the fishes swimming, Far down in the depths below him, see the yellow perch, the sawa. Like a sunbeam in the water, see the shogashi, the crawfish. Like a spider on the bottom, on the white and sandy bottom. At the stern sat Hiawatha, with his fishing line of cedar. In his plumes the breeze of morning, played as in the hemlock branches. On the boughs, with tail erected, sat the squirrel Ajidaumo, in his fur the breeze of morning played as in the prairie grasses. On the white sand of the bottom lay the monster Mishinama, lay the sturgeon king of fishes, through his gills he breathed the water, with his fins he fanned and winnowed, with his tail he swept the sand floor. There he lay in all his armor, on each side a shield to guard him. Plates of bone upon his forehead, down his sides and back and shoulders, plates of bone with spines projecting, painted was he with his war paints, stripes of yellow, red, and azure, spots of brown and spots of sable. And he lay there on the bottom, fanning with his fins of purple, as above him Hiawatha, and his birch canoe came sailing with his fishing line of cedar. Take my bait, cried Hiawatha, down in the depths beneath him. Take my bait, O sturgeon Nama, come up from below the water. Let us see which is the stronger. And he dropped his line of cedar through the clear, transparent water. Waited vainly for an answer, long sat waiting for an answer and repeating loud and louder, Take my bait, O king of fishes! Quiet lay the sturgeon Nama, fanning slowly in the water, looking up at Hiawatha, listening to his call and clamor. His unnecessary tumult, 
till he wearied of the shouting. And he said to the Canoza, to the pike, the Maskinoza, Take the bait of this rude fellow, break the line of Hiawatha. In his fingers Hiawatha felt the loose line jerk and tighten. As he drew it in, it tugged so that the birch canoe stood and wise. Like a birch log in the water, with the squirrel Ajidalmo perched and frisking on the summit, full of scorn was Hiawatha. When he saw the fish rise upward, saw the pike, the Moskinoza, coming nearer, nearer to him, and he shouted through the water, Essa, Essa, shame upon you. You are but the pike, Canoza. You are not the fish I wanted. You are not the king of fishes. Reeling downward to the bottom, sank the pike in great confusion, and the mighty sturgeon Nama said to Ugudwash the sunfish, to the bream with scales of crimson, Take the bait of this great boaster, break the line of Hiawatha. Slowly upward, wavering, gleaming, rose the Ugudwash the sunfish, seized the line of Hiawatha, swung with all his weight upon it, made a whirlpool in the water, whirled the birch bark in circles, round and round in gurgling eddies, till the circles in the water reached the far-off sandy beaches, till the water flags and rushes nodded on the distant margins. But when Hiawatha saw him, slowly rising through the water, lifting up his disc refulgent, loud he shouted in derision, Essa, Essa, shame upon you! You are you, Goodwash, the sunfish. You are not the fish I wanted. You are not the king of fishes. Slowly, downward, wavering, gleaming, sank the Yugudwash, the sunfish. And again the sturgeon Nama heard the shout of Hiawatha, heard his challenge of defiance, the unnecessary tumult, ringing far across the water. From the white sand of the bottom, up he rose with angry gesture, quivering in each nerve and fiber, clashing all his plates of armor. Gleaming bright with all his war paint, in his wrath he darted upward. Flashing leaped into the sunshine, opened his great jaws and swallowed both canoe and Hiawatha. Down into that darksome cavern plunged the headlong Hiawatha, as a log on some black river shoots and plunges down the rapids found himself in utter darkness, groped about in helpless wonder, till he felt a great heart beating, throbbing in that utter darkness, and he smote it in his anger, with his fist the heart of Nama. Felt the mighty king of fishes, shudder through each nerve and fiber, heard the water gurgle round him, as he leaped and staggered through it. Sick at heart, and faint and weary, Crosswise then did Hiawatha drag his birch canoe for safety, lest from out the jaws of Nama, in the turmoil and confusion, forth he might be hurled and perish. And the squirrel, Ajidalmo, frisked and chatted very gaily, toiled and tugged with Hiawatha till the labor was completed. Then said Hiawatha to him, O oh, my little friend the squirrel, Bravely have you toiled to help me take the thanks of Hiawatha, and the name which now he gives you, for hereafter and forever, boys shall call you Ajidalmo, tail in the air the boy shall call you. And again the sturgeon Nama gasped and quivered in the water, then was still and drifted landward till he grated on the pebbles till the listening Hiawatha heard him great upon the margin, felt him stand upon the pebbles, knew that Nama, king of fishes, lay there dead upon the margin. Then he heard a clang and flapping, as of many wings assembling, heard a screaming and confusion, 
as of birds of prey contending, saw a gleam of light above him, shining through the ribs of Nama, saw the glittering eyes of seagulls, of Kayoshk, the seagulls peering, gazing at him through the opening, heard them saying to each other, "'Tis our brother Hiawatha." And he shouted from below them, cried exulting from the caverns, O ye seagulls, O my brothers, I have slain the sturgeon Nama. Make the rifts a little larger, with your claws the openings widen. Set me free from this dark prison, and henceforward and forever, men shall speak of your achievements. Calling you, Kayashk, the seagulls, yes, Kayashk, the noble scratchers, and the wild and clamorous seagulls, toil with beak and claws together, made the rifts and openings wider in the mighty ribs of Nama, and from peril and from prison, from the body of the sturgeon, from the peril of the water, they released my Hiawatha. He was standing near his wigwam on the margin of the water, and he called to old Nokomis, called and beckoned to Nokomis, pointed to the sturgeon Nama, lying lifeless on the pebbles, with the seagulls feeding on him. I have slain the Mishinama, slain the king of fishes, said he. Look, the seagulls feed upon him. Yes, my friends, Kayashk, the seagulls. Drive them not away, Nokomis. They have saved me from great peril. In the body of the sturgeon, wait until their meal is ended, till their claws are full with feasting, till they homeward fly at sunset, to their nests among the marshes, then bring all your pots and kettles, and make oil for us in winter. And she waited till the sun set, till the pallid moon the night sun, rose above the tranquil water, till Kayashk the sated seagulls, from their banquet rose with clamor, and across the fiery sunset, winged their way to far-off islands, to their nests among the rushes. To his sleep went Hiawatha, and Nokomis to her labor, toiling patient in the moonlight, till the sun and moon changed places, till the sky was red with sunrise, and Kayashk the hungry seagulls came back from the reedy islands, clamorous for their morning banquet. Three whole days and nights alternate, Old Nokomis and the seagulls stripped the oily flesh of Nama till the waves washed through the rib bones, till the seagulls came no longer, and upon the sands lay nothing but the skeleton of Nama. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com or you can follow the links in the show notes. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review wherever you get your podcast or on iTunes and tell a friend. Thank you for your patronage, and as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history.